Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the podcast where we talk about every single item, every single boss, every single everything in the Binding of Isaac. I'm William Hughes, and I'm joined, as always, by a guy with a good head on his shoulders, for now, Gary Butterfield. We got the guillotine. We got the guillotine. You better run. This That's feels... from the coup. Okay. Music. All right. Boots Riley. Uh, uh, well, yeah, which you may know from the Sorry to Bother You soundtrack, which was a concept album before it was a movie. Great movie. I love that movie. Great movie. So Great much. album. Yeah. Uh, today we're talking about the guillotine. Mm-hmm. Um, a, uh, uh, one of the, uh, items that has a lot of upsides that I will not take for anything. Yeah, no, like a lot of upsides. <laughs> one real big downside. Yep. <laughs> Which uh, is so that it makes the game borderline impossible unplayable. to play. <laughs> yeah. It, it increases stats, makes impossible to play. Um, it is a little guillotine is the item. Mm-hmm. You pick it up, it says an auto body experience. And what this does, uh, so we'll talk about, let's focus on the positive. Sure. Uh, Tear, uh, tears up. Tears up, damage up. Damage up, one DPS, damage up. DPS up all over the place. DPS uh, increase gives you a powerful orbital. Orbital. It, it does. A very good orbital. Orbitable. Mm-hmm. The, oh, orbitable. That is big. Uh, does high damage. But uh, it's your head and your tears come out of your head, but your head is no longer your hitbox. Your body is, and it makes it impossible to play. Yeah, because your he- your the thing you're firing with is going in a circle. Yep, and the thing you have to keep away from enemies is hard to tell. It's it's like how do you, it's like they ask themselves how do we make Isaac's heart less shitty while still being very shitty? Like who's still sh- it just really tells you a lot about Isaac's heart. That you can, this is easily like five times as good as Isaac's heart Uh and still not worth taking. Like Isaac's heart, arguably worst item in the game, I think. Yeah, I think that's Um, very fair. It's weird and interesting and I'm looking forward to talking about it, but. Yeah, but I've never won a run with it. Yeah, you just, Um, I I think whatever challenge you have to do with it, but. Yeah, uh, I I, I did that one too, I think. I've done all the challenges except for speed, so. Yeah, well, Gary, I guess that kind of, you know, wheat from chaff. Anyway. Fake gamer boy right here. (laughs) Yeah. I don't do things that aren't fun. And uh, I, I do them to the exclusion of almost anything else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why we make such a good team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah. You just can't aim with this fucking. Yeah. Thing. You, yeah. You just can't aim. You do that good damage when you, when you actually use it. I've read a lot of like, uh, for a while, um, when I was like in the midst of my Isaac mania, mm-hmm. I was reading the, the Reddit item of the day discussions, you know? And, uh, it's just, that's, it's exactly what it sounds like. And a lot of people will go to bat for this fucker. Cause they're like, I just think of it as a really good orbital and I don't really, uh, think about where my tears are coming from. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense because you have to think about where your tears are coming from to shoot. Yeah. You know, because that's, that's what the whole game is. Like you're just going to yeah. shoot into rocks 90% of the time. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You miss a lot with this thing. Um, uh, yeah, there are, there are items that stop it from being a pain in the ass. Uh, tractor mm-hmm. beam fixes it. Mom's knife fixes it. Yep. Um, I like having, uh, the one time I've had fun with this item, cause this is unlike the heart. I have taken this before. Mm-hmm. I mean, at the end of the run, I'm definitely going to win. Sometimes I'll take it just because I want to see another, a big number added to my damage multiplier. Mm, and it's a weird you know? effect. It's a weird effect. Um, I like it with, uh, some diplopia sh- shenanigans mm-hmm. I've gotten into, um, having two of them somehow makes it easier to see where you're at. I don't know what that is, but it is, you know, you're firing double the, the tiers and, but it makes it, it makes it a little bit easier and going up from there. So I've had that, I've diplopied it before and I've also had box of friends. Yeah. So I've done the like weird Isaac. He looks like a biblical angel, mm-hmm. you know, just a series of heads in a circle. That's pretty great. Yeah. Um, I, that's pretty fun. I like this item. I just don't take it. Yeah. Uh, because I, I feel like this is something we say like once every like 50 episodes. Uh, the Binding of Isaac is not always about winning. Sometimes yes. it is about having a weird fucking run. Yep. And seeing these uh, items interact in a weird way. Mm-hmm. Um, I also also kind of like it with duct tape, um, which just makes it you're still not firing from the correct place, but you fire from one place rather than moving. Yeah. So sometimes that can be worth it. And duct tape is actually we haven't talked about that. We won't talk about it for a long time is a trinket I kind of like. Yeah, it's interesting, uh, again. Yeah. Like, I, I much prefer, like, trinkets that, like, do something weird. Yes. Or just give you a, a good stat up, yeah. which there's only a few of those. But those are obviously inarguable. Um, yeah. Um, but, yeah, very, very bad. 
you know, and as should happen, as Isaac has, has had his uh, head cut off by a guillotine in his basement. Yeah, that shouldn't do a good thing. Mm-mm. And you shouldn't, uh, you know, you shouldn't have a guillotine in your basement. Did I ever tell you about uh, my old history teacher, Mr. Steely, who had a guillotine in his basement? Uh, no. Uh, I, I'm sure I've, I've told a bunch of stories about this dude before. I've definitely talked about him uh, having us make um, uh, uh, what it, sauerkraut by having the big fish tank at the back of the the classroom that people can mash it with a two by four. I'm sure, yeah. I told you about that before. No. Um, he's a real weirdo. So he had this. Uh, he had us make sauerkraut, and he's like, "This is how they used to make it in pioneer times. You know, take a long time. We had to macerate it." And stuff. So he just put it all in a fish tank in the back of the room and had a two by four there for students when they wanted to. They could smash this, uh, this stuff. But we're in eighth grade. So people are putting gum and pencil saving, shavings and shit. Sure. And there at the end, he just threw away this huge fish tank full of sauerkraut. But he also was, was obsessed a, with, was that a semester project or like a week project? What was it? Was, it was more than a week. I don't remember exactly, but it was quite a while. So we had this going was, on. Was there a situation where it's like, Danny, you're getting a little too heated up. Go take it out on the sour crowd. <laughs> go, go crowd it up. Danny, crowd go smash it. crowd, bro. Danny, smash crowd. Put that sweetie away and smash crowd. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> or, you know, smash it with the sweetie. Yeah. Um, I just remember him actually being a little bit disappointed that we didn't like, you know, make it edible. Yeah. Uh, in the end. <laughs> well, that's what he gets for trusting children. But he also, he loved torture devices and collected them and brought in a bunch of uh, pictures of them. Um, talking about the French Revolution and stuff. He was a social studies teacher and talking about mostly American history, but he talked about like, he did like a section on like, you know, when we were talking about the Revolutionary War, talking about different revolutions. Mm-hmm. And he talked about the guillotine and then he like was passing out pictures and a lot of them were clearly like library sources. And he's like, yeah, this one's in my basement. I've got this recreation model. And it was just a straight up fucking guillotine. Yeah. Wow. You know? That's, uh. Yeah. I guess, he, like. Yeah. You ever Google he, that guy? See if maybe he uh, squeak squeaked a couple kids? I should probably look up Mr. Steely. His name is Mr. Steely as well. Which I'm you Dan that a Steely. Way. Yeah. Um, I'm, it's a, my name and a descriptor. Um, he also, uh, he gave us this political chart that was like right wing to left wing. Uh-huh. And in the middle uh, was Colin Powell. And they're all just like a, a name, you know, so it was like Bill Clinton, blah, blah. And then Colin Powell had a question mark after him because he was in the middle. Like we couldn't just tell. But that meant he, who knew, you know, he's a centrist. So uh, me and Derek forever were just like Colin Powell, cool. like as, as a kind of like a little watchword in joke. Yeah. Gary, did he talk about Republican baptisms? Uh, no, that's not that of, I remember. That's one of the more interesting execution methods that the French revolutionaries came up with. What's a Republican baptism? Oh, that's where you uh, take some clergymen who have refused to swear an oath of loyalty to the country uh, over their loyalty to Rome. Put a bunch of them on a raft uh, that's been specially set up, hog tie them, and then pull the plug on the raft. Mm, so slow, uh, slow sink. Yeah. Constitution, uh, that's right. Because literally the guillotine wasn't fast enough for all the priests they wanted to kill. Yeah. And that was That's the big problem with the guillotine. That's why you got that multi-guillotine. Yeah, from Rapid Gillette. Fire. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Mach 5. Yeah. <laughs> Gillette guillotine. The, oh uh, man, if SNL wasn't centrist bullshit, that would be an SNL sketch. That would be a, it'd be a good one. Yeah. The um, I uh, I hope that I die without being ever without ever being hogtied. <laughs> Gary, it's a great goal. It, I, Thanks, I like that on your anti bucket list. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 on, it's on my uh, my convex tech up uh, list. Yeah, my tech my tech uh convex list uh, to never get hogtied. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, I wish I could go there with you. That's not yeah. true. I've not been hogtied. Well, and if you if you don't want wish to be, I I don't. I uh, I'm actually very claustrophobic. So I think it would be very scary. Like something very bad is going to happen. <laughs> you know, well, yeah, scary. <laughs> Historically, yeah. the hog tie has not led to good situations. Yeah, you don't you don't do it for a surprise party. Like you don't you don't hog tie somebody, black bag them, drag them to a black site, and then put a hundred dollars in their Patreon. You know. <laughs> Was that a King of Segway moment? <laughs> it's pretty good, right? Yeah. Um, it's, uh, if you like the show, head on over to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv and uh, throw us a couple of buckaroonies. Yeah, I got a picture of the pair of anguish up on my computer now. That's an unpleasant one. I don't, yeah, I know about that one from medieval times. 
Oh yeah, the, uh, the 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 weird torture room museum in medieval times. I uh, had a moment. I was like talking about medieval times uh, with my girlfriend, and we were talking about going. And then I had to look and find where the nearest one is. It's and like it is too far. It's like five hundred miles away. I, yep, I have done too this far. exact same thing with my girlfriend. In some ways, we are we are very good friends. <laughs> <laughs> like good night. Good night. 